Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to introduce the topic of database indexes. Now, there are a couple of important reasons that you as a ServiceNow developer or administrator need to have at least a basic understanding of how indexes work. Number one, custom tables. When you create custom tables in ServiceNow, you'll need to ensure that the queries to the data in those tables is performant because the tables that you create will not come automatically with their own indexes. Number two, performance of all queries in general. So as an administrator of ServiceNow, you'll need to ensure that your instances are running smoothly and that page loads and background processes are not taking too long. Because remember, your database, the tables, the data are being queried every minute, every hour, every day. Now, although ServiceNow might not be considered purely a full stack environment because we don't have direct access to the database, we need to have at least a basic understanding of data modeling and the performance of our queries. Now, one of the main ways you can improve query times is through indexes. The purpose of an index in a database is fundamentally the same as an index in a book. A book's index contains a list of subjects which reference page numbers where those subjects are found. The index doesn't tell us exactly what line in that page or the position in that line, but we're able to use the index to locate information more quickly. Similarly, a database index will allow a database to locate records in a table more quickly. If a specific field has been indexed, for example, the make of a car, the index will store the location of records for those different makes. The database can then use that index to return results more quickly where the make field has been used in the search query. My intention with this video is not to tell you everything there is to know about indexes. There are plenty of resources out there and I've provided some links in the description below to the ones that I found useful. So I think the first thing that we can do to get deeper into this topic is just to go ahead and look at a simple example in our ServiceNow instance. For our demonstration, we're gonna use this table here, vehicles. As you can see, it stores over 600,000 records at the moment. So you can imagine that queries to this table could be potentially quite long. Now, I know this is the case already because this table is relatively new and I have not created any indexes for it yet. If I go to ServiceNow Studio to the table record and scroll down, there is a related list here called database indexes. Now, by default, the system will create this one always with every custom table uh, for the primary key, which is the sysid uh, in every table in ServiceNow. Um, but if we go ahead in our table and just do a simple query, let me just uh, do uh, a query here where the make is Volvo. Okay, and run that. As you can see, it's taking a while. And there we go. Okay, so that query is probably at least two, three seconds long. And then you add the time for the application server to do its thing, for the browser to actually render the page and load the records. Uh, yeah, it all adds up. You can come down here to the bottom right-hand corner to see the total response time. Uh, and as you can see here, it was over 10 seconds. So over 10,000 milliseconds. In other words, over 10 seconds. All right. So, but as we can see with this response time here, it's actually made up of different components. Uh, we've got one here called server, which is actually where, where the query will be contained within. So we can't actually see here exactly how long the query itself took but there is a way you can actually time that. And I just wanna show you that because we wanna make our tests that we do as accurate as possible. So what I'm going to do is use a script to time the query itself. So I've got one here ready to go. The first thing I'm going to do in this script is to flush the cache. Okay, so every query that I do, I just want to make sure that it's not using the cache, that nothing else is kind of going to get into way in determining how fast or how slow the query is going to perform. So it's going to flush the cache, first of all, using this glide system method, cache flush. 
And then I'm going to use this undocumented method here, Glide Stopwatch. Okay, you will find references to it in the ServiceNow community and on various ServiceNow support pages. Um, and uh, this will basically start a stopwatch, uh, essentially. And then we perform our query of that table using the make Volvo. And then at the end, I'm going to output how long that query took. Okay. So uh, I will copy that and I'll just come into another browser tab here and go to my background scripts. I'll pop it in there. Now, what I'll have to pay attention to here is the scope. It will need to be global because a couple of the methods that I'm using here can only be run in the global scope. So the cache flush can only be run from global and the glide stopwatch likewise. So let's run that. Okay, so now that it's finished, uh, we've got some messages here about the result of the cache flush. But what we're really interested in is this line here, the output of the script, the query duration here. Okay, so it's over two seconds, two and a half seconds approximately. Okay, I could actually go back. We could just run it one more time just to make sure that that duration was accurate, that it wasn't an anomaly. And we can see here that the time here was 2.3 seconds. Okay, so we're looking at well over two seconds for that query. Now, if we were to leave this as it is without doing anything else, this is going to create all kinds of headaches and problems for a simple query based on the make of the car. You know, if we've got uh, users who want to load lists based on a certain query, if we have flows, scheduled jobs, other background processes going on that are querying that table, you can just imagine how long uh, all these processes are going to take and how lackluster the performance of your instance will be uh, specific to that table. But it can also impact the performance of your entire instance in some cases. So the easiest way to resolve this issue that we've got here is to create an index. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go to ServiceNow Studio, come down to the bottom here for my table record again under Database Indexes, click on New, and we'll create an index for the make field. So I will select that. Now, I could leave that as it is. Okay, but I'm just going to go one step ahead here because I'm going to come back to this uh, a little bit later in the video. I'm actually going to add the model and the city as well. Okay, in that order. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the index. Uh, I don't want to be notified, so click OK. I'm not going to create a unique index. That's if you want to ensure that if you have multiple values that together should form a unique record, uh, then you can do that here. All right, so I will close that. And I'll just refresh this list. Okay, and now we can see we've got the index created. It takes just a few moments to do that. All right, so now that we have an index for the make column and these other two as well, we'll go ahead and test our query again, just on the make field. So let's come back to our background script. Let's come back here. And we'll just execute exactly the same query once more. Okay. So if we have a look at the output here of the script, it is 53 milliseconds, which is, yeah, a whole lot faster than two and a half or 2.3 seconds. Okay, a significant improvement. All right, let's come back. Let's execute it once more just to make sure, again, that that wasn't an exception. All right, and again... Uh, 108 or 183 milliseconds I'm sorry a little bit slower than last time but still significantly faster than our initial two tests that we performed okay so if I were to come back here now and just refresh this list 
by clicking on the filter, you can see that we're significantly faster. If I come back to the response times here. Okay, that was uh, just over two seconds in total for, for everything, uh, including the, the query and the network and browser rendering, uh, etc. But, you know, that's uh, a whole lot faster than 10 seconds. Okay, so a real easy, quick win just by creating an index on the make field. Okay, everyone, so thank you for watching. Since I recorded this video, I decided to break it up into two parts. In this first part, we introduced the concept of indexes, as well as provided a simple demonstration of how indexes can significantly improve query times. However, if you would like to delve a little bit deeper into indexes, I also invite you to watch part two, where we will, one, take a look at the slow queries log to determine for which queries we need an index for. Two, examine the explain plan, which will tell us a little bit more about the query itself, including if an index was used, if so, which one, and even what part of the index was used. And third and lastly, we'll also take a look at composite indexes. So again, thanks for watching and see you next time.